Thank you, Professor Dover. It's uh, my job and pleasure to recognize uh, our public officials. Uh, we'll begin with uh, Chief William Denahan of the uh, Adams Board of Cuyahoga County. <laughs> Eugenia Cash, the board chair of the Adams Board of Cuyahoga County. Armin Budish, our guest speaker, who we will hear from uh, very soon, and Nikki Antonio uh, from the Ohio House of Representatives, who is also receiving an award uh, today. Are there any other elected public officials or public officials in the audience uh, that would like to stand and be recognized? Okay. Please. Kelly. Petty from the Board of Developmental Disabilities. Thank you. Our guest speaker has gone by many esteemed titles. Attorney Armin Budish, partner of Solomon, Steiner, and Peck. Host Armin Budish, Golden Opportunities television show. Representative Armin Budish, member of the Ohio House of Representatives. Minority Leader Armin Budish, the Ohio House of Representatives. Speaker Armin Budish, Speaker of the Ohio House. And currently we address him as Cuyahoga County Executive Armin Budish. Beginning in the 1990s, many of us invited him into our kitchens on Sunday mornings where through his television show, he provided us with advice and workable solutions to, con to concerns that faced us, our families, and our communities. In 2006, he made the decision to run for public office and was elected the Ohio House of Representatives to the Ohio House of Representatives from the 8th District. He was reelected in 2008 and, has cho and was chosen Speaker of the House by his peers in January 2009. To that end, he created several new committees, including economic development and housing and urban revitalization. County, Cuyahoga County Executive Armin Budish received his bachelor's degree cum laude in 1974 from Swarthmore College in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where he was a political science major. He then went on to complete his Juris Doctorate degree from New York University School of Law in 1993. He founded the law firm Budish, Solomon, Steiner, and Peck, of which he continues to be a partner today. Armin Budish is nationally recognized for his work in the field of consumer law, estate planning, and elder law. It is my pleasure to introduce our special guest, Cuyahoga County, Armin Bud Cuyahoga County Executive Armin Budish. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. I was thrilled to hear all my titles. If I added the ones that my wife calls me, We'd have to censor this. Um, and my wife is here somewhere, so if you run into my wife Amy, she's back there. Um, and in, uh, in my prior uh, lives, uh, I've actually had the pleasure of working with many social workers over the years as an elder law attorney and uh, in connection with my television program, Golden Opportunities. I've worked extensively with seniors uh, and their families, um, uh, Samantha Brooks and uh, uh, Bell Likeover, I, I, two great friends that I've known for a long, long time, and uh, uh, both have been on my TV show, and, and great to see you both again here. And uh, uh, it's great to see, I, I, actually I should note, uh, I, I, Jan Ridgway, who is being honored today, uh, helped teach my kids to love reading uh, in one of her prior lives, and, uh, and also I'm Seeing, uh, sitting next to Nikki Antonio, who I got to uh, know very well and become close friends with in the Ohio legislature, who leads the efforts on, on uh, women's issues and also health care issues, among others, uh, in the state on behalf of all of us. And I truly appreciate what you do, Nikki, even though it's frustrating these days. Um, and many of you know, I believe, my uh, new chief of staff for the county, uh, Sharon Sobel Jordan, who led the uh, Center for Families and Children for uh, uh, many years and uh, obviously has uh, all of our interests at heart. Uh, she understands and knows well 
uh, what, uh, the importance of what all of you uh, do on a daily basis. Uh, and that gets me to what uh, we're going to do as a county. Um, we, uh, uh, some of you may have heard, oh, I should also mention Bill Denahan, who I've worked closely with for many years, who uh, is also a, a longtime friend. Um, uh, you may have heard that we've talked about um, administering the county government with both a head and a heart. And uh, what I mean by that when we say that is we, we know that we need to be creating jobs, we need to uh, uh, operate with metrics, streamline government, uh, but we also will be operating with our heart and uh, understanding uh, the needs that people have and making sure that we're best serving uh, the people uh, most in need, in particular in our community. Uh, that's what county government does. Uh, we, we will go about that uh, in a variety of ways. <clears throat> when somebody, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about no wrong door. We've all heard that phrase. Uh, the way I understand that phrase, when people look at government, uh, they don't typically know, uh, they don't even know where the doors are. They don't, they don't know the difference between a door to state government, a door to federal government, a door to county government, a door to city government. Uh, they just know government. Uh, and they know that they have a problem sometimes and uh, they may knock on a door and the answer is, well, you're at the wrong door. You know, this is not a county problem. This is not a city problem. Uh, you know, even within the county, this is not a jobs and family services problem. This is a, a Medicaid problem over here. You know, this is a senior and adult services. So what we need to do, and this is not going to be easy, but we need to make sure that when somebody comes to the government, that we help them, and that we help them even if it is not a county issue, even if it is a city issue, even if it is a state or a federal issue. If somebody comes for help and they need veterans' services, we should be helping them with that. Uh, I've had already meetings with the folks from our County Veterans Service Commission, for example, and we're going to start by having some of their folks come and and actually sit in the county building so that when somebody comes in and they need help and it's something we can help them with through veterans benefits, not just focusing on our, on our, our own little narrow silos, uh, that we can help them more holistically. And hopefully at some point we can get to the point of a unified application where somebody comes in and they need assistance and they may not even know the programs that are out there. Uh, and if they come in knowing that they need some, you know, utility assistance, for example, that, you know, we can also help them if, if they need help with their health care coverage, if they need help with uh, food stamps, if they need help with Social Security benefits, if they need help with veterans, whatever it is. It would be great to have a unified application. I know it's very complicated because there's different systems and different programs, but we're going to work towards that at least, and I've already had conversations with our, our, our regional and actually the U.S. Director of um, uh, uh, Health and Human Services uh, to see whether there's some things that we can do. I offered the county to be a guinea pig uh, in it. Uh, you know, there, we just have to move forward and we have to make it easier for people with the eye on people, not, you know, not our little silos. Um, we need more outreach into the community. Uh, so it shouldn't be that we sit in our offices in Cuyahoga County and wait. Um, and we haven't been. We've actually started. So, for example, uh, uh, one specific example, we, we uh, uh, know that some people started getting letters. We, we worked very hard, Nikki and I and others in the legislature, to get Medicaid expanded so that people who are working but not, not earning enough to, to be able to afford health insurance are able to get it. Uh, and the governor pushed it through, and we got Medicaid expansion in the state of Ohio. Uh, and uh, now people who got the extended Medicaid are getting letters in many cases saying that they're going to be dropped from the expanded Medicaid because they haven't uh, renewed their application. They haven't updated their information. Now that's the law. They have to update their information. What we as a county have done, we created a program uh, uh, renew Medicaid one, two, three to make it easy for people to, to renew their applications and to reach out because people don't even know it. 
25% of the letters that were sent out from the state telling people you got to renew came back unanswered. So, so a lot of people don't even know, let alone, you know, even the people who get the letters don't know, you know, what they're supposed to do. So our county um, uh, employees have done a great job starting to reach out and, and uh, you know, we've sent letters, we've done robocalls, we've done personal calls, we've been out to the churches, we're going out to community centers. This is a campaign not unlike a political campaign, uh, to get people knowledgeable and get people signed up. It's too important. We, can't, we worked so hard to get Medicaid expanded. We're talking about 90,000 people in this, this county that got expanded coverage and now are threatened with losing it if we don't make sure that they get their applications renewed. So we are working to do that as a county. It's the first big project in terms of getting, getting our folks, getting the message out into the community better than we have in the past. And I'm very proud of that. And that's the sort of thing we want to do more and more. Uh, so, you know, I, I was given three minutes. I'm, I'm over my time, but... But I wanted, to, I wanted to be here today because it's important. You are all important. You're the people doing on the ground the work with people who need help. I know how difficult it is. I know how important it is. I appreciate it. And, uh, and I look forward to uh, making sure that our county is working closely with you uh, to, get, uh, to accomplish all of our vision, which is helping those who need it the most. Thank you all for having me today. Hello, everybody. I am the director of the National Association of Social Workers Cleveland Region. And for those who know me, they're not going to believe what I'm about to say, but I get nervous talking in front of people. <laughs> um, thank you for coming. Thank you for being social workers. Thank you for caring enough to give, to help, and to support, and to make a way for those of us who aren't able to help ourselves. I would like to start off um, by saying that we appreciate you. We appreciate you going to school. We appreciate you persevering. We appreciate you overcoming adversities. We appreciate you being here and paving the way for other social workers and those in the helping field and practices to come and help our community and change our homes, our um, avenues, and pave different ways for our children, our families, and those to come. So with that being said, I would like to start our, um, our awards, my favorite part. Um, I'm going to start with Miss Samantha Woods. She will be our MSW Social Worker of the Year. And if you can step up here, Miss Lady. I'm sorry. Social Worker of the Year. You know, I only have one good eye. <laughs> Ms. Brooks is our Social Worker of the Year. She has been in, in the leadership role with the Benjamin Rose Institute since September 1993. Serving four years as a community office director, six years as director of clinical operations, and since January 2004, director of community at, uh, advocacy. And also, in addition, Samantha has a postgraduate certificate in lifespan development and gerontology from Akron University. Congratulations <laughs> and thank you. So they did say that I would have a minute or two to say something, and I'm going to try to hold myself to that. Those of you who know me certainly realize that I can probably talk the rest of the hour. But this is a real honor for me. I thank uh, the National Association for Social Workers, and I thank uh, Ed McKinney and Michael Dover for their nomination of me to receive this award. But, and as everybody says, I could not have done this without just really key people in my life. Um, 
acknowledging that God first is the head of my life. My parents have always been very supportive. Those that know me uh, also know that they now, 93 and 94, reside with me. Uh, and I am truly blessed to still have them in my life. But in terms of my career, I have to acknowledge those individuals that have been a mentor to me throughout my social work life. And starting with uh, uh, Patricia Stewart, who was an early supervisor when I worked with Family Services in Akron, and Pat now resides in Savannah, Georgia. Uh, my prayers go out to her as she uh, is recovering from an illness. Uh, and then here, Georgia Annisberger. And I believe all of you, or most of you in the room, know Georgia, uh, and know that she is just a phenomenal person that has taught me a lot in the field of social work and worked for Benjamin Rose for a number of years. And then finally, I have my mother here. <laughs> so, <laughs> now many of you will be surprised in that this is my fictive mother. This is the mother that uh, has guided me in my advocacy life. Uh, and many of you too know Belle Likeover. And many people when we're in the community and I go up to Belle and I say, hi mom, how are you doing? They say, <laughs> <laughs> but truly I have said many a times when I grow up, I want to be just like Belle. And now that I am almost an adult, I think I'm doing a good job. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> Our next award goes out to Dr. Larry Foster. Dr. Foster is receiving our Lifetime Achievement Award. He has enhanced the role of social work and healthcare and importantly has improved the, ca the care received by cancer patients. Dr. Foster has been a great ambassador for the social work profession and congratulations. I present to you this plaque. Thank you. I wrote my one minute speech so I would stay within the time limit, so first my glasses. I'd like to thank you for this Lifetime Achievement Award. Thank you, Ohio Chapter and SW for sponsoring this award and your work on behalf of social workers. I'd like to thank my colleagues who nominated me for this award. Most of us know our achievements are not accomplished alone. Therefore, I offer sincere thanks to my colleagues at the university and in the community. Specifically, thank you faculty and students, CSU School of Social Work, College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences for your ongoing support of my teaching, research, and service in the community. It's been an honor to be your colleague, to teach and mentor students in the field of social work, to serve the profession and the larger community. Thank you to the Cleveland Clinic Tossie Cancer Center, where I've been welcomed as a colleague and co-investigator in psychosocial oncology research. Thank you, Leukemia and Lymphoma Society of Northeast Ohio, for the opportunity to serve the cancer community as a member of the Patient Services Committee, as co-facilitator of cancer support groups. Thank you to the staff at the Gathering Place in Beechwood for welcoming me into your wellness community, serving those touched by cancer. Thank you once again to all of you for honoring me with this Lifetime Achievement Award. I would like to thank, think that this award is not only for what I have achieved, but for the person I've become. This next award is for Agency of the Year. Cuyahoga Hills Juvenile Correction Facility and Mr. Chris Freeman will be receiving the, the plaque. Congratulations. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, 
the National Association of Social Workers. They're celebrating their 60th anniversary with the theme of Work Paves, The Way for Change. And I just have a short little thing to say to you guys. Um, in this field, this field of work, um, which you cannot give up on a young person's life. Um, it's an old proverb that says, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. So with social workers helping our youth and their families solve problems, we meet them where they're at. Um, we prevent crises, overcome and cope with some of life's most difficult issues, such as trauma, abuse, addiction, mental illness, and parenting challenges. All of our social workers um, are incredible resources to the youth and their families. We serve providing groups, individual counseling sessions, during treatment plans and teaching life skills. Social workers at our agency also reach out to DYS to discuss youth on other caseloads and how we can best serve these guys. Continue your mission as a change agent, you know, through social justice and social reform through the public and private sector, and also continue to work with intention and purpose because you are appreciating, you do change you, people's lives. I wanna thank Megan Riley and Tammy Lapkins and all of you for selecting Cuyahoga Hills for the Agency of the Year. Thank you. Representative Nikki Atiano, our public elected official of the year. Thank you. I can't do I'm sorry? I can't if you want to. No, 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 that's fine. Good afternoon. My name is Nikki Antonio. How are you? Good. Well, I'm good too. I am so honored um, and so appreciative of, of this recognition. So I wanna thank um, the National Association of Social Workers. Um, you do me proud every day. And so um, I appreciate this acknowledgement. I attended this conference a few years ago. I was asked to uh, just let you all know that. And um, I made a few suggestions as I want to do sometimes uh, when, <laughs> when um, it occurred to me that uh, we could do a little bit better in celebrating our diversity in our leadership. And um, graciously, my recommendations were um, welcomed and received, and I've been told that ever since um, the, the real attention to the diversity and the leadership of everyone who is the National Association of Social Workers has been acknowledged. And so I appreciate that um, as well. You know, Jane Addams, uh, you know, you, we all know. She was a pioneer. <laughs> we all know her. I feel like I know her personally. Um, and certainly she's, she's the embodiment. Many of you in this room are the embodiment of her. Um, I love the fact that she was a philosopher, a sociologist, an author, and a leader in women's voter rights, as well as working on world peace. No small accomplishment. She said, the good we secure for ourselves is precarious and uncertain until it is secured for all of us and incorporated into our common life. She also said, nothing could be worse than the fear that one had given up too soon and left one unexpended effort that might have saved the world. Well, I express my gratitude and appreciation for this great honor you've given me today, but please know how much I appreciate the hard, impossible work all of you do. Your intelligence, ingenuity, compassion, creativity, and courage, and that hard work make the impossible possible for the people you lift up every day. Our policies in the legislature create the path, but you, the professional social workers, you light the path and save someone's world, and in turn, our world, every day. Thank you.
Okay. Um, is Jane Ridgeway and Quentin Durham in the building? Are they here? Oh. These two dynamic individuals who work together at the Garden Valley Neighborhood House in their respective capacities as executive director, that'll be Jan, and as founder and director of the Durham Construction Trades Institute, which operates out of the Garden Valley Neighborhood area, will be receiving our Public Citizens Award. <laughs> So Quentin has given me permission to speak for both of us. So Martin Luther King Jr. said that everybody can be great, that anybody can serve, that you don't need to have a college degree to serve, that you don't need to be able to make subject and verb agree to serve. The only thing that you need is a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. We thank you for this award. But more importantly, I want to introduce you to a mighty and fearless force of 10 volunteers who willingly and freely give of their time, their energy, and their ideas every single day to make us worthy of this recognition. So Brenda and Buford Miller, will you stand? <laughs> Yavita Ely, will you stand? <laughs> Patricia Graves, will you stand? Carla Bond, will you stand? And Michelle Rollins, who is our social work intern. She is not here at this moment because she's out helping a client get a bed to sleep in. She's doing what she's supposed to do as a social work intern in our center but I wanted to acknowledge her because what she has brought to our center is an environment of mutual learning and service. These people believed in the vision, they believed in the mission, and they work every day to make it happen. Quentin is my partner. I used to say in crime, but I say in service now. <laughs> Quentin is my partner in service. And we do what we do because we should. We do what we do because there is a need. And no recognition is needed, but we so very much appreciate this honor. Thank you. Last but certainly not least, Ms. Monique Crown. Ms. Crown, dear Ms. Crown, as our NASW Ohio Chapter Region 3 Bachelor's of Social, Social Work Student of the Year. Monique is a senior at Ursuline College, accredited baccalaureate social work program. After completing her Associates of Applied Science and Human Services from Cuyahoga Community College in 2012, she began her course of studies at Ursuline College for her professional degree and the goal of licensure as an Ohio social worker. Currently, Monique is a student, student member at NASW. Yay! For the past five years, Monique has worked at the St. Martin de Porres Family Center as an outreach worker while attending Ursuline College. Mm -hmm. And with this, my dear, I present to you this plaque. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. <laughs> First, I would like to thank the NASW Chapter of Ohio Region 3 for selecting me for this award. Um, next, I would like to thank Ursuline College uh, for representing BSW students 
and of the social work department's directors, uh, Sister Kathleen Cooney and Sharon Wilson for nominating me for this award. Being selected as the BSW Student of the Year for Region 3 means that I have demonstrated the skills, knowledge, and persistence to be a change agent in society, and I am very honored to receive this award. Thank you. Thank you.